Guys, this video is brought to you by our partners at Geology. Geology's won all sorts of awards for their skin, hair, and body care products, and they've been featured in Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men. They make simple and effective skin and hair care routines customized for you. All of their products are built around a handful of powerful, proven ingredients that have been trusted by dermatologists for decades. I'm loving their morning cream with SPF 30 to make sure I'm protected from the sun and their deodorant helps me stay fresh in the heat. My favorite scent is the deep jasmine and clove. Right now, for a limited time, Geology is hooking you up with an insane offer. Use my code CHAIL70 or scan the QR code on the screen to get an exclusive 70% off their award-winning skincare trial set. On top of that, you get to save 30% on add-on products of your choice when you add it to your trial. This is one of the best offers you will see, so get it before it's gone. All you gotta do is click on the link below. Let's talk Paul Craig. You know, guys, I've been thinking about him. I came to you guys and I, I shared my thoughts on Paul's call out of Bo Nickel. But I've been thinking about Paul. I watched him personally finish Jamal Hill in the very first round. And it was a technical display when he did him. That's a great win, right? They've played the highlights many times of Paul Craig finishing on Goliath. I'm giving Uncle Live his only loss in his whole MMA career. That's a good win, right? So, Paul looked fantastic over the weekend. And I don't just mean the performance. I mean the body. He looked healthy. He looked fit. He looked in shape. He's gone down to 185 pounds. Now, some of you experts are going to say, Chael, welcome to old news. No, I, I knew this too. For, for anybody that's just kind of tuning in, he's dropped a weight class. So that's one of the reasons that would explain why he looked so good, right? I mean, there was, just, there was nothing on that body but muscle. And he laid out why. He did an interview yesterday. I believe it was with Ariel, but either way. He talked about, I'm 35 years old. Talked about this is the path to the championship. Now that is interesting. Because is he right? Right? When you have a guy like Paul Craig, who beat the most recent champion by finishing the first round, who beat yesterday's number one contender by submission, but then he'll run into some losses here and there, right? Whereas it's there's some sometimes it's a matchup issue. And Paul didn't go as far as to say one of the things that I think is a deficit is my size and or strength. He didn't say that. But the fact that he changed the size, thus changing the strength, makes me think perhaps that was one of the motivators to 185 pounds. And perhaps it is time that we start to look at Paul differently. Because I don't think we look at him as a title contender. I don't think we look at him as a potential title contender. I don't think we look at him on who realistically within the next calendar year could we see challenging Izzy for the belt and ever mention Paul Craig, and perhaps we should. So he comes out, guys, and in this interview, he was sharing his weight cut. And he said that he got in the ring for Saturday's fight. He got in the ring heavier than he used to get in the ring for 205 pounds contest said that he weighed 213 pounds weighed in at 185 which you know they 186 got in the ring at 213 pounds i've never heard of that i've never heard of that much weight and that is an advantage and he did maul his opponent i mean he he big brothered him all the way down to the face off when he came to the center and they whoa he had that look of intensity, and, and some guys just fight better at home. For some guys, that's a pressure. For Paul Craig, you put him in England, man, it's a different animal. He's a scary guy anywhere. You put him there, it's a different animal. But he did maul him. And maul is, how often do you get to use that word in life, right? Maul pertains to, say, have you ever seen a cat with a mouse? I mean, it's a maul. It's a size issue. 
And I bring that to you because that explains a lot that he 213 pounds. There was a guy, Rich Franklin. Rich was the best weight cutter in our sport. And he was definitely had the notoriety and the popularity for this. He would weigh in at 185 pounds. He would get in the ring at 202 pounds the next day. And, but it was the science. Like, if you ever have a meal with Rich, he takes out a scale. He weighs the chicken. He weighs the carbs. Like, he really knows his body well. And it was a tool. It became a weapon. It became something that he was able to use to gain favor for his athletic performances. And But I'm, I'm telling you the story. He was the most famous. He was the most well-known. He went from 185 to 202 pounds. It's the most that I ever heard of until today. Craig beat that by 11 pounds. I'm stunned. I'm stunned. I don't know how you could do that. Like the actual logistics of that. How much food and water could you pack on, by the way, and then hold on to? And you used to be able to put on a a little bit of weight. I mean, it'd be good for a good couple of pounds uh, through the IV process. But they don't do that anymore. And I'm just I'm just picturing Paul, right? Like I wish I would have had a video camera and been with him. What must have that looked like from the time he weighed in until the next day? Like, what must have that looked like? And it doesn't have to be what you're thinking, guys. Like, this doesn't have to be burgers and pizzas and and, and donuts. It might have been, but but it doesn't have to be. It could be carrot sticks for all we know. We just gotta eat a hell of a lot of them, right? Like, I'm just curious. So that Quite literally, he consumed 27 pounds of food and water in a 24-hour period. Now, to maintain and hold on to 27 pounds, that was off the top of my head. Don't think you have to correct me. But to do that, you got to take in closer to 40. This is shot. Think of a milk jug. Think of a great, the big milk jugs with the hand, the great big milk jugs. That's eight pounds. That's one gallon. It's eight pounds. Think about how heavy that is. There are people that don't have weights and, and they take milk and they fill them with water and they use that to get a workout in, okay? He put four of those down. He put an equal to four of those down in a 24-hour period. I mean, it's just a really interesting thing. Like, how did we get here? And then, by the way, when you do consider that he's 35 years old, how long can you do that? How many times can you do that? And I don't have the answer, by the way, guys. I'm asking questions, not answering questions, but... Paul matters, and Paul deserves something. And these are big sacrifices that he's making. To pull all the way down to 185 pounds, because he's got a goal and a vision, and he thinks he's more likely to get it there than he was at 205 pounds. I mean, I'm just saying, if we're the audience and we're observing that, you can go both ways. You can first tease a guy. You can first tell a guy that he's wasting his time, that this is never going to happen. Like, you can bring your evil side out for sure. You want to be a jerk? Go ahead. But if he goes in there and he's getting finishes, fast and easy in mauling fashion in feature bouts at some point we need to pay a respect to that paul craig versus bo nickel it was an interesting call out i don't think they're going to make the match i don't think they are but why not I, i'm not against it and, and we don't have to go the bo nickel route by the way all i'm asking here today is that we keep our eye on paul that we give him a fair shake he shared with us some of the struggles. He shared with us a change in his physiology because he sees it for the greater good. These are things that we look for in athletes. These are things that we look for in guys that we get behind. I submit for you, starting now, we need to look at and think about Paul Craig differently.